Hi, my name is Ozzy Papik, I'm CEO of Net Integration Technologies. We made this video to show you a real-time deployment of Nitix for Sage Agpac ERP. This product will allow you to deploy complete Sage Agpac ERP accounting system on top of DB2, on top of Nitix in about 10 minutes without any requirement for you to know Linux at all. As you know, doing installation of Sage Agpac ERP on top of DB2, on top of regular Linux, takes many hours and sometimes days to complete due to inherent complexities of Linux and um, difficulties with tuning of DB2 database and so forth. We have taken all that out. I'll show you how we can achieve the same result in literally less than 10 minutes. So, in order to illustrate that, we have a typical setup here. Uh, it's a IBM 206 server uh, hooked up to our corporate network. We also have a XP workstation which has Sage Agpac ERP desktop components already loaded on it. And in order to make this easier to follow, we have actually hooked up two separate monitors and two separate cameras so you can follow exactly what I'm doing on these screens over here. So let's start. Uh, this server is completely blank. As you can see, the screen is showing invalid boot record. There's nothing on it. Nitix comes on a single CD. So we start by simply popping in our Nitix CD into a CD-ROM. Following this, we hit enter to initiate the boot process. And seconds later, as soon as the CD-ROM recognizes uh, the, the image, you will get this screen. You can continue with launch of Nitix or go into compatibility and burn-in tests, which allow you to test your hardware. But if you just do nothing at all, system will continue. And at first it looks just like a typical Linux. But then things change. We get into this blue screen, which doesn't look like any other Linux you've seen before. And on top of the screen you see a boot progress. There are four distinct stages through which system is going. And the detail screen is giving you a list of all the actions that are happening in background. Now, while this is going on, and it's going to take about 30 to 45 seconds to complete, system is not only starting up and initializing, but it's also connecting itself to the network and figuring out its own IP addressing and everything else. So, it's, I think, interesting to note that at this point, the disks are still blank. Everything is happening off of CD. At the end of this process, um, we'll be asked to hit enter key once again. This is going to happen just about now. As you can see, we're in a stage 4B. And uh, in a few seconds, we'll be entering a next stage of our setup. Now, I think we're literally less than five seconds away. Here we go. Hit enter to begin. Now, the big red screen is not an error. It basically says that configuration process should be continued from a web browser on the workstation. So I'll hit enter to acknowledge that, and I'll draw your attention to two details. One, here we have the IP address that system has picked up for itself. We can change that by selecting IP address, hitting enter, and typing some other address if we so choose. We'll leave it right now at 192.168.10.57 and we'll move over to a workstation and open our web browser. Now, in the, in the browser screen we will type this exact address which is 192.168.10.57 and we have to put it at port 8042. Hit enter, acknowledge the certificate. I think you have to do it twice. And here's our first initial screen. 
We're setting up administration account. We'll leave it at root, which is a default. Password, twice. Domain name stays as it is. We don't have to touch that. We have to type in the activation key. I've cheated, I have it already in my paste buffer. Save changes. Next step, log in using the same username and password. And here we are. This is the status screen. Next step, disk status. Disks are not configured. We'll set these disks, first one is primary, second one is IDB, which stands for Intelligent Disk Backup. More about that in a second. Click. This process will take about another 30 odd seconds, during which you will see server initializing both disks and starting up all the processes underneath. At the end of that step, we have a core NITX installed with its backup and disaster recovery systems implemented and our next step is to go on and add the DB2 and ACPAC pieces. The way we're going to do this is we're going to go into, and let's confirm that this is done, Bingo, this configuration is still in progress. I think we have a few more seconds for this to complete. There we go. Our disk status is now green. We have IDB. So next step, software update. Click. We're scrolling down through a few notices and you're noticing that add-on package, IBM DB2. Click, install. First of all, we have to accept a DB2 license click and at this point the notice says it's starting to install Nitix Virtual Server 1.0 with IBM DB2. Now this takes about five minutes and there is really nothing for us to do while this is going on. So what I will do is I will go and get a cup of coffee and I'll come back in five when this is done. So I'll see you in see you in five. All right, I had my espresso. Let's see how our installation went. Oh, excellent! We're done. I'll draw your attention to the logo logo here in the top right screen. Nitix Sage Ankpak ERP Edition. If you scroll down you will notice that IBM DB2 is running, that it has sample ACPAC databases. There are two more steps for us. Number one, we'll click on this link and uh, log in into a DB2 web management front end in which you will see that our ACPAC databases are in place. We would need to type in here our DB2 license, which is the step I will skip right now. Otherwise, this is a three-user sample uh, uh, or three-user trial system that you can, uh, you can use. And um, that is it. This is now fully operational system. I will prove that by starting the ACPAC application. This is a this is an unregistered application. We would obviously have to go on and register that and you all know how to do that. So um, I'm getting into the app and here's our accounts payable, accounts receivable. So there you have it. What we have done is we have installed a complete ACPAC system on DB2. Everything is tuned. Everything is backed up um, every 15 minutes. We have um, everything in place, no Linux commands, and uh, this is it. I think you ought to call us and get one of these in your shop and try it on your own and just uh, see how easy it is.